Well, what's going on everyone? JJ here, one of our students at BJK University. Um, good to have you, my friend. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing yourself, Bashar? I am doing excellent, man. Super excited to uh, be here with you. Um, obviously, you've been with us here for some time. We wanted mm -hmm. to bring you up here, ask you some questions that some of our current students are wondering about. Also, some other people that are interested in joining BJK University want to learn a little bit more about from someone who's been through the journey, mm -hmm. kind of walk the walk, and uh, kind of get to share, um, you know, their 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 own uh, twist or their own kind of way of how this whole thing went. So the first question that I want to ask is, and that's kind of a question that I get a lot, is why did you choose Amazon out of everything else? Honestly, it seemed like it had the most potential. I, I just start, already knew from my own research that half of all online sales go through amazon.com. I mean, that is where buyers look to go. And two-day shipping is so important as well. Uh, fun fact, I tried to run a, a drop shipping store mm -hmm. um, be, before uh, in 2020. And I had so many chargebacks uh, to my credit card because people don't want to wait 30 days. They expect two-day shipping because Amazon has set that precedent. Amazon really is the platform for making e-commerce sales online, in my opinion. And I wanted to be a part of that. So was the, was the chargebacks mainly because of the, 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 the shipping time people, wow. you know, people would wait five days, their product still wasn't, wasn't there and they'd say fraud and they'd wow. charge back their, their, their purchases. That's interesting. So, I mean, you know, you're, you're a little kind of in the, not in the beginner stages, but you're like halfway there, you know, you haven't mm -hmm. made it right. You're on your mm -hmm. way there. And, uh, and I think it's important for, for people watching to really see someone that's gone through, you know, gone through those beginner stages and then the launch and kind of trying to make a product work. What is the, what is the potential that you see from what you've seen so far? Unimaginable. The potential, it doesn't just for me, it doesn't just stop at products. I mean, I want to launch as many products as I can. I want to automate my process to where I can launch products faster. Mm -hmm. But I see a future just as certain other people in the group have of starting other entities <laughs> for warehousing purposes, for, uh, you know, Amazon PPC management purposes. At the end of the day, if you need to, if you need to build something, if you build it for yourself, other people are going to use it too. I just see a, that this could be a potential to really just create, like you've said in many of your videos, a, an Amazon empire, an e-commerce empire with multiple different channels, all helping one another. Each fan, each hand helps feed the other and just continue to build from there. So it's a lot of it's a lot of possibility, and I think it's a lot greater than a lot of people see. It's not just products, but it's what can you do with those products? What other services can you provide? Interesting, and and I mean, you know, obviously right now we're kind of thinking in the future, but how do you feel like that? You know, once you're there, how do you think that's going to have an impact on your life, or what kind of an impact will that have on your life? a positive impact for sure. I mean, it, it definitely is cool that on Amazon, you can see such short-term growth. You can see your return so quickly, but my mind is always in the future. My mind is, you know, what's this going to look like? I've got one product right now. What's this going to look like when I have 10 products? I mean, take my returns that I'm seeing right now, multiply them times 10. So it's just always having that growth mindset, always looking into the future like that. I don't know. Did, did that kind of answer your question or? Yeah, no, absolutely. Man. A bit there? Absolutely. Definitely. I mean, it, it's, it's always a, a great thing to kind of look in the future and see what is, you know, what the potential is and then kind of bring it to where you are right now. And, and it's always like mind boggling what, uh, what's possible. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So you started with us about how long ago was it four or five months ago? Yeah, it was about five months ago. So it was April 28th. So just right at the, the very turn of the month, beginning of March, we'll say. Okay. Um, how long before that had you been researching about Amazon? Not necessarily coaches, but about Amazon. Probably a good six months. 
because I started uh, I started an e-commerce dropshipping store in March of 2020, and it was just a constant struggle. I didn't really see any return on investment on it. And then I started getting all those chargebacks because people weren't willing to wait for the shipping, the, sh the extended shipping times. And somewhere throughout this process, I kept hearing a lot about Amazon. I read a lot of uh, a lot of digital marketing blogs and a lot of a lot of marketing newsletters and things. And people kept talking about Amazon. And I'll tell you what the tipping point for me was. I forgot to mention this earlier, uh, but uh, I work for a company that does digital marketing services. We offer digital marketing management services. And in August, we started offering Amazon PPC management as a service. And that was our sixth service that we added to the lineup. And I will say it's the only service at our company that's ever had a waiting list. And I got to thinking, people want to be here. Like this is where people are trying to get, people are trying to get on Amazon. People want to be here. There's something to this Amazon. So for about six months, um, you know, maybe a little bit longer from August through uh, April the next year, about eight months, I started kind of really thinking more and more about this. And uh, I started following you on Instagram. I liked the content that you were putting down. And that's really how the process got started there for me. So, I mean, you know, you seem like a sharp guy. I mean, wh why yeah. didn't you just you know, BJK University isn't the most expensive, but it's also not the cheapest. So mm -hmm. it's like, why not just take that money invested in products? Why didn't you try to do it on your own? I'll tell you what, Bashar, I'm, I'm 30 years old. This is about uh, my fifth business that uh, business endeavor that I've tried to go into. Uh, only one other one was actually, you know, actualized where I was actually selling things and making profits or losses. And the first time it was a food truck. So I was in the food awesome. service industry yeah. and it was, I mean, working from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m., seven days a week. It was just absolutely miserable. Yeah. Never made a dime doing it. I, I was always operating at a loss. Uh, could just never keep our head above water. And it was a miserable time in my life. And my biggest mistake my biggest mistake was that I tried to do everything myself. Mm. I built my own food truck. I mean, I learned how to work with metal so that I could build my own food truck. And I installed all my own equipment. I wouldn't let anybody help me. I had no employees. I tried to do it all 100% myself, straight out of college, no life experience whatsoever. And it was, it was a flop. It was a huge failure. It was a, a, a really tough time in my life. So let me, let me, you know, let me ask a follow-up question here because you said something and it kind of triggered something because right now I'm working with a partner and trying to go into a new venture. And I feel like he's trying to, like, I could see where he could accelerate what he's doing, but I feel like he's trying to go through things through trial and error. And it's like, dude, we are at a level where we don't need to do that right? Mm -hmm. Like we've learned the hard way that that's not the way to do it. Why mm -hmm. do you think some people, you know, like, even though they might kind of know that there is a better way, but they still want to do it themselves and really just want to figure it out themselves, even if it takes like 10 times longer or whatever. I mean, I, I, it's not my intent to condescend anybody or, you know, speak poorly of others, but I really think it's pride. I've, I've been there. I've, I've been on that boat. And I, I think a lot of it is just pride and thinking that, uh, you know, there's only one way to do it and trial error is the only way to proceed and relying too heavily on yourself. When I learned the power of, of outsourcing and the power of relying on others and accepting help from others, I feel like it just doors started flying open in my life. So it really, it really does just expand your reach, being able to draw on someone else's knowledge. I mean, whenever you, whenever you want to bake a cake, do you just, you know, start taking flour and eggs and, and <laughs> milk and, and start mixing proportions until you get it right? Or do you go buy a recipe book? Someone's already gone through the hard work of, of figuring out how to bake a cake. And now you can right. use their experience instead of trying to use trial and error and, and bake a cake with no instructions. 
Right. Absolutely, man. Um, okay. So you started obviously product research. You've already launched the product. So why don't you kind of walk us through what that looked like? You know, because I know that that's something that a lot of people wonder, how long does it take me to find a product? How long does it take me to talk to suppliers? So let's talk numbers a little bit. Let's go in the weeds. Uh, first question is, how long did it take you to go through the content? I stayed pretty well on track. I will say step three is long. Everybody buckle down because yeah. it takes a while to get through step three. Uh, that one probably took me two or three weeks to get through. Uh, but then a, a lot of the other content was very quick. I even went back and rewatched some of the some of the content. But I placed my first order uh, about six weeks after I started the program uh sea shipping wow. and uh quick, actually yeah it was it was a it was pretty quick and i did sea shipping so it was another six weeks for uh <clears throat> excuse me for the shipment to arrive at amazon so uh between april 28th uh two months later july 1st was the first day that my product had arrived to amazon had been checked in and got listed as active so it was pretty quick from start to finish and to answer uh the question about what the product research looked like for me. It was a couple of weeks. As I was going through the content, I was I was working alongside of it. I wanted to have the content and I wanted to also be getting my feet wet doing the product research. But I found that just eliminating all distractions, not just trying to do 30 minutes of product research here and there, but eliminating all distractions and just sitting down for two hours and just blocking everything out and doing nothing but product research, you can cover so much ground you can you can test so many keywords in uh, a, a period of time of two hours and that's when i found my first product wow that's awesome okay so we get this question uh or this concern um pretty often i you know i found a product and i go to to try to differentiate and i just can't find a a way to stand out from the competition or I was able to figure all that out, uh, but when I go to the supplier trying to get it to where it's profitable and it's going to make me some money, I'm unable to do that. You know, suppliers are charging too much for shipping. Did you experience any of those obstacles? And if you did, how did you overcome them? I did, and I am. I'm working on launching my second product right now. I'm in this the phase of contacting suppliers right now, and one of the toughest things is uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and tell you a little bit about the product. It's a, a, it's a toy that's mm -hmm. been painted. And the biggest complaint, the biggest reason for mm -hmm. one-star reviews that I've seen is that the paint chips. Um, but I've seen others online off of Amazon that are stained instead of, instead of painted. They're stained. And so I'm looking for suppliers right now. And the biggest struggle for me has been finding a supplier that will paint this particular, or that will stain this particular toy as opposed to paint it. And I mean, I've gone through thousands of suppliers so far, and I've only found two that uh, will, will stain this product. So I'm, I'm afraid that I'm not going to find many, many suppliers that are willing to do it or able to do it. And it's going to really drive up the prices. I'm not going to be able to leverage and negotiate the prices down as low. So I am running into that uh, error right now with the product that I'm currently launching is just uh, not knowing if I'm going to be able to negotiate the, the price down as low as, as possible. Um, as far as with differentiation with the previous launch, it was tough. I, I bundled the product and I, you know, made a, a couple of small differentiations the uh you know a, a logo that was uh, attachable and detachable for the particular product there were certain things that i did for differentiation perhaps i could have done more mm -hmm. but i feel like i was too novice or maybe perhaps too afraid to ask for it from the suppliers but i've since since i've launched i've seen other suppliers that you know have a very similar product to my own but you know, the stitching on it looks like it's more durable or something to that effect. So I think just asking these suppliers, 
uh, even applying this to my current product, I need to take my own advice. Maybe I need to just ask suppliers, can you do this for me? Is this, is this a capability? Are you able to make this manipulation in the product so that it's in, increases in quality so that its value is better? So I think just uh, asking would be a good way to differentiate when you're talking to suppliers. Ask, can you do this for me? Can you make this change for me? Okay. So what would you say would be the most important aspect of launching a product according to your knowledge so far? Probably either product research, uh, step three, doing all the product research, selecting the right product. I think that's a huge part of it. And then as well, an effective launch. Mm. And you know what? I think also beyond the launch, I think what you do after you launch, once you hit, hit step six, once your product arrives at Amazon, that's not the finish line. I mean, that is, that is the starting line. That's where it steps starts. One through five. Those are just, that's just the warm up. Once you get to step six, that's the starting line. Then you have to start, you know, making sure that, uh, you're doing your giveaways effectively, that you're doing your PPC effectively, that you're consistently uh, logging in and optimizing your, your PPC and keeping track of your, your ratings and your reviews. It just takes persistence. You've gotta be willing to put in the effort and persist and you will prevail. Interesting, okay. Um, what are you gonna do differently about your second launch from your first launch? My first launch, I did not brand my product for the okay. first order. Okay. Um, I ordered 200 units unbranded and it was a huge mistake. If there's one piece of advice that I could just uh, offer up right now to anybody that's going through the program, don't cut corners. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, Bashar made this specific process for a reason and every little piece like logo design and box design, you might not feel like it's that important. It is like, don't cut corners. Right. So for the second order, um, I ordered 800 more units, all branded, all custom packaged. And I feel like that significantly increased the quality, the value that I provided, even having the insert cards in there where people could easily uh, leave reviews and access their ebook, things of that sort. So don't cut corners and definitely get it branded the first time. Don't wait till the second order, get it branded the first time. Okay. What is the, what is your monthly target um, in the next 12 to 24 months? Where do you want your Amazon business to be at? I would like to have five products by April 28th, 2022. So I want to have five products launched. So, I mean, after that, after my first calendar year in the program, uh, I'd love to see that number double every year. I think uh, the number of launches should double every year. And with automation, it's really only possible with automation because product research takes a long time. Uh, waiting for your, your shipment to arrive, shipping takes a long time. So you're going to have to have multiple products being launched at the same time. It's all, it's all just about growth. It's always about consistently trying to outdo yourself grow, grow your business, grow your number of products and always keeping that quality there as you're doing it as well, in my opinion. So you're all about growing because the reason why I say that is because I know that a lot of people interested in this business uh, or even some of our students come in and they're like, well, I want to, you know, replace my nine to five, you know, or whatever the case, mm -hmm. maybe I want to make two, three thousand dollars a month. And then they launch a product, maybe two products. And then now, you know, two, three months later, they've quit their job and then now they're reliant on their Amazon business and they're kind of struggling to scale it. So mm -hmm. your mentality is different than that then. Mm -hmm. No, I want to, as long as I can, I want to reinvest. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, I mean, maybe I'll set aside 10% that I'll take out and pay myself because you like to see the fruits of your sure, labor, sure. right? So yeah. maybe 10%, I'll take that out and put it in my bank account and go out and, you know, buy, buy something nice for myself every month. But majority of it, like I want to reinvest at least 90% back into the business and grow it. I mean, I want 100 products. I want 200 products. Bradley, uh, uh, Bradley Sutton from Helium 10 said that he's launched over 400 products. I want right. 400 products. Like I want to grow this thing. 
That's interesting. Wow, that's a great way to look at it. Um, do you? So, I mean, you know, you started this year. You started in 2021, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are either hesitant or they are a little. What's the word? I guess reluctant to maybe start or maybe even scale an Amazon business. They're saying because it's getting saturated. But then now you're telling me that you want to scale and you want to have tens and hundreds of products. What do you think Amazon is saturated or I mean, what do you think there? Um, yeah, I think today probably Amazon is saturated more than any other day in the past that Amazon has ever been in operation. And I think tomorrow it's going to be more saturated than it was today. And I think the day after that is going to be even more saturated than it was today. So if you want to get on Amazon someday, what are you waiting for? Like there's never been a better time than now, except yesterday. And we can't go back in time, right? So might as well start right now because it's only going to become more saturated. It's only going to become more difficult. The more you can do now, I think the better you're setting yourself up for success. So do you think that someone wanting to get on Amazon now is still worth it for them? Absolutely. Not, not a doubt in my mind. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many people still on Amazon. It's not a closed market. It never will be a closed market. There will always be opportunity on Amazon. Whether Why is that? Because there's new sellers on there every day. And Amazon's algorithm, it protects new sellers. It, it fosters new sellers into the market by giving them a chance to, to operate their listings on the first page of Amazon instead of making them start at the very bottom and climb their way up. It gives them that grace period to appear higher on Amazon. Amazon's inviting you. It's literally inviting new businesses onto its platform right now and trying to get people to launch more. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, should you have done this by yourself? Do you think you would have been where you are or have this the, the same potential than right now? No. And the reason I say that is because I've, I'm a member of multiple groups on Facebook, the Helium 10 group, for instance, Helium 10 users. And I see examples of people in that group that have tried to launch products on their own not to scare anybody. I'm, I'm sure it can be done. I'm sure if you read enough articles, watch enough videos, it can probably be done. But I've seen so many people that are trying to launch products with no reviews and launch products with uh, without doing any giveaways, without really understanding some of the important tasks that you have to do mm -hmm. in order to ensure that your product succeeds. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, like throwing darts in the dark. You, you just don't know which ones are going to stick. So it's better to have, have a plan. And Bashar, you've got a plan. You have a plan that you can follow that produces successful results. Interesting. Why, why did you, well, before I answer this question, when you started looking at Amazon, were you looking at just one like you said, you started following uh, my page, I think on Instagram, mm -hmm. were you only following my stuff or were you also looking at other coaches and other universities that taught Amazon? You know, I've followed a few people uh, on Amazon and uh, I can't remember any of their names. One of them was like Peter Pru. Another one was like e-commerce empire builders. I mean, I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's dozens of them out there, probably hundreds of them out there that, that do it. But I never really seriously considered ever being a part of them. I was really just using them for the education that they brought forth in their videos. Um, in fact, I mean, some of my coworkers and I, we, we all work in digital marketing and we make fun of some of these guys. Like how, you know, how are you trying to sell this masterclass? If, uh, you know, if you're making so much money, why are you selling a masterclass like this? But when I started following you, and I started watching your videos, there was something different about you. And I was still a little hesitant. I was still a little skeptical, but I just swallowed it down. Uh, I really sat and thought about it and made a decision and decided to take the leap and join your program. Um, I, and I went all in. I, I didn't go through the trial. I just jumped right in and just signed up for your program. And it was because there was something different about you, Bashar. And I couldn't put my finger on what it was, but I could tell you were different than a lot of the other 
you know, gurus that I followed on Instagram. And when I got into the program, I realized what it was immediately after I went through step one of the program. And it was that you genuinely have a passion for education. You have a passion for helping others out, helping others achieve their goals. And I could see that. I could tell that in step one, you were trying to not only teach people how to sell on Amazon, but teach people how to have a more positive mindset and how to set goals for themselves and how to strive and how to achieve those goals that they set out for themselves. And it was just completely different than anything I ever would have expected from an Amazon program like this. It just, uh, I mean, it floored me to be honest, Bashar. So I thank you for, for step one of the process. That's awesome, man. You know, it, it's kind of funny because we did it. We used to not have step one in the program. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was building it out, uh, some of my team was like, Hey man, you know, we're teaching people how to sell on Amazon. I don't think this is necessary. And, um, and it's, it's crazy because it gets brought up over and over and over again by students saying, Hey, you know what? Step one was just like that mind shift that really just kind of transformed, you know, how I'm thinking. And I mm -hmm. think there, you know, it still can be improved. Um, uh, but I, I'm glad to hear that. Um, when you look at everything that's being offered at BJK University, what is the thing that you value the most and you believe that someone coming in starting new should really press and lean on it as, as, you know, as much as possible? Easy. Accountability partner, 100%. Find an accountability partner. If your accountability partner drops out of the program, find a new one immediately. There has been nothing more helpful than my accountability partner and I even joined a small accountability group. Uh, this girl named Samantha that had just joined around the same time said, I wanna make an accountability group and have you know like 10 people in it that started around this time. So I said, sure, I joined it. And then of course, you know, not everybody's gonna make it to the, to the finish line through that, but there were about five of us in that group that uh, all launched products we still chat every day. I mean, my phone is just blowing up all day long with messages that they're sending me. The accountability partner part of the program has really just kept me on track, kept me accountable. I mean, it's well-named. It has kept me accountable. And if I ever find myself getting ahead of anybody that's in my accountability group or getting ahead of my accountability partner, then I get to help him out. And that in turn, you know, they say if you can teach something that you you must have already mastered it because if you can teach it to somebody else you have to have that that mastery mindset so it's helped me out personally grow my own products being able to help other people uh in my accountability my accountability partner grow his own products that's awesome man what would be your what would be your number one advice to someone starting out or looking to start out have persistence. Don't stop. If, if things get tough, you can't stop at the first roadblock. You've just got to hurdle over it and keep going because you're going to run into to roadblocks. Maybe right. it's because you cut a corner like I did and your mm -hmm. sales suffered because of it. You've got to pick up. You've got to change your plan. You've got to change your tactic and continue to move on. But just don't stop. Don't throw in the towel. You'll never get there if you do that. You have to persist. That's awesome, man. Were you at first when you were looking at, you know, joining BJK University or even wanting to start an Amazon business, were you hesitant? And if so, what were some of the doubts that were going through your mind? I was hesitant. I was hesitant before I started the program. But, um, you know, anything that you invest in, it's, it's almost necessary. I mean, Education freely given is just about worthless. It doesn't motivate you to do anything. But if you're investing in your education, I took a leap. And whenever I invested in my education with you, Bashar, I knew like I've already, you know, I've already put my money towards this and I'm going to continue to invest in this program and invest in launching products. So yes, there was doubt there, but it was before I started the program. Once I hopped into the program, I've already, I've already invested in myself. I'm already, I've already set myself on a course. Why stop now? But some of the doubts that I had before joining the program are, does this work? I mean, is this, 
going to uh, you know be able to produce a significant amount of return, uh, you know, return on investment? Is this something that I could potentially see myself pursuing for years to come and growing into a business that could potentially support me and my family? So we don't have to work anymore except on launching new products. We don't have to go out and get nine to fives anymore because we're in the e-commerce sphere launching new products. Are these things going to be actualized through the BJK course? So those were some of my doubts, but as soon as I joined, I shelved those doubts. I, I put them on the back burner. I got rid of them. I destroyed those doubts and I just moved forward. How important do you think that is? Because I see a lot of people, whether if it's uh, doubting themselves, doubting the process or, you know, trying to, like, as you said, you know, uh, there is a proven formula, don't cut corners. Sometimes I see people trying to like change things or, or, or do certain things that like we're, that's not what, how we do it. Right. Mm -hmm. How important do you think is it, it is to really stick to the process and make sure that you just stay the course and focus? It's so important. I mean, there is, this is a process. Here's the thing. I'm sure there are plenty of different ways to launch on Amazon. I mean, I've even, uh, everybody's heard of uh, arbitrage, retail arbitrage. That's, that's a certain way. And I'm sure there's a process with that, but that is not this process here. You've chosen this process uh, by joining BJK. I have chosen this process and I'm going to follow the process through. And one thing I can say about you, Bashar, is that I love how aggressive your process is. You don't want to, you don't want to make money on Amazon. You don't want to compete on Amazon. You want to crush your competitors on Amazon. And therefore, every step in the process is built specifically to not make money on Amazon, not compete on Amazon, but to crush the competition on Amazon. So if that's your intent, if you want to be number one and crush it on Amazon, then you have to follow the steps that Bashar has set forth in order to do that on Amazon. That's awesome, man. Well, I got to tell you, man, um, I really do appreciate your time here. Uh, you know, I thought this was going to go a lot longer, but uh, but uh, you're, you, you know, you've definitely given us everything that we need to, to share with everybody out there. And um if you're if you're a a, a, a new uh, um, you know member of BJK University, do look for JJ. He'll be uh, he'll be there probably. Might even add you to to his accountability group. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that uh, we did this, man. I uh, appreciate your time. Do you have any last words for everyone watching right now? No, I've said it all during the program. Just have faith, persist, be decisive, and you can't go wrong. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. Well, I, I can't wait to uh, to celebrate all of your upcoming wins and uh, and show you off even more. Uh, but outside of that, for everyone watching, thank you all, and uh, we'll chat soon. All right. Thank you, Bashar. I'll take it easy.